Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Hillsborough County Building Board of Adjustment Appeals and Examiners. It's March 16th, 2021. It's 902. Call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for the oath if you're going to give testimony. My allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you're going to give testimony, raise your right hand, answer the following question. You promise to affirm any testimony you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Samuel Greenberg. Here. Michael McEnany. Here. William Deaver. Uh, Charles Foster is absent with excuse. Daniel Greenberg is absent with excuse. Henry Mosley. Here. James Palavita. Here. Kathy Pratt. Here. Doug Shields. I have not heard from him. Here. Okay, so we have five in attendance and nobody on the phone that's board member. Okay. Everybody have a chance to review the minutes. Yeah. Make a motion to affirm or to approve. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. Mr. Chairman, can we get names for first and second? I'm sorry. Mosley. Mosley first. Any unfinished business? Carry on. New business. Applicants. I show a total of eight. Um, all for testing. So I think I'm going to skip the uh, um, consent this month and just go down the list because there are some rehearings anyway. So first one up is Antoinette Beck, test for carpentry. Any comments from anybody? Get a motion. Motion to approve. Second. So that was not going to be in Palo Vida. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. She's approved for testing for carpentry. Second license she's applying for is tile marble contractor. Again, Antoinette Beck, test for marble. Tile marble contractor. Anybody questions or comments? Motion? Uh, I approve. Motion to approve. Not going to any approve. Second. Mosley, second. Discussion. Polls in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. So moved. Jonathan Harris, third hearing for painting contractor. Comments from anybody or questions? Well, it looks like he still has uh, outstanding uh, debt to Phoenix Financial, unless I'm reading that wrong. Yes, yeah, I saw that too, 604. Yeah. Is Mr. Harris here? Mr. Harris, are you on the phone call? No, did not check in. Third hearing, what's your pleasure? What was the... Uh... What was he held up for in the past? Credit. He did submit additional information. Yeah, it looked like everything was cleared up except for that Phoenix charge of 604 that's still in credit. Right. So he had to make progress? Yeah. yeah. I sure would like to know what the reasoning is for uh, not clearing up the Phoenix financial. Uh, debt though. You have a choice. You can table one more time. You can deny since he's not here. What's your pleasure? How was his uh, uh, how's his uh, on site, you know, his hands on 
Uh, apparently that was good, Mike. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have a problem with that. And he did clear up a lot of, of items from last month, except for that one thing. And this is his third attempt? Yes. No, sorry, second. Well, no, third. Okay. This is the third hearing. And, and he's not in attendance? That's a yeah. tough one. <laughs> I say table it for 30 days and give one more chance to show up. That's your motion. Mosley will second. Any discussion? Well, we'll uh, Kimber, you notify him that he's got 30 days and, and if he doesn't attend and clear up or give us an explanation for Phoenix, then we have no, our hands are tied. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So move 30 days to clear up the last issue. Jonathan Hernandez Rodriguez, test for painting contractor. Comments, anybody? Well, I didn't really see any credit on his uh, credit report, did you? No. Now, correct me, this is the different, the newer style application that you were telling me about? The application itself, it's missing, it's the summary, the two new summary pages. Right. Correct. But the credit report and background check are identical to the old ones. But there's really no credit report. It was ran. Um, there doesn't appear to be any accounts that are reported. Say again? No accounts reported on it. But it came back clear. It came back clear. But he has no established credit anyway. How do you know that? By the credit report. He has no mortgage, no installments, no revolving, no other. You know, there's no record of any credit. It's a real short credit report. The last three pages of the package is not a whole lot there. Yeah. Is Mr. Rodriguez on the call? Hello, good morning, yes. Your name and address, please. Uh, Jonathan, A13, uh, I'm sorry, A11 Road on Palm Harbor, Florida, 34683. Okay, there's a question. Do you have any credit accounts anywhere? We see you don't seem to have any negative credit, but we don't see any positive credit either. <clears throat> uh, I'm using my federal um, AT number to get my credit. Uh, I'm on process uh, to get my my social security number, and uh, this is uh, by the same information that I'm used for Pinellas County. What? Say that again. You're a little hard to understand. Uh, I'm using my federal. Uh, 18 number to get my my credit and uh, this is exactly the same info that I'm used for Pinellas County to get the license on Pinellas County. Okay, do you have a, a credit account you're painting, correct? So do you buy from Sherwin Williams or Porter or somebody where they extend you 30 days or 45 days credit account? Mm, yes, so yes, I have uh, accounts with uh, with Sherwin Williams, PPE, um, uh, um, action rentals for equipment. Yes. What we're not seeing as part of your package is information from any of your credit vendors that would issue you a letter and say, we extended, you know, 500, 2000, $5,000 of credit from those vendors that you've given the names of. Can you? Supply that information to us. Uh, yes, sir. Jim, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. But you know, we need to make sure that the vendors are indicating that the credit is in Mr. Uh, Hernandez Hernandez's name and not in your company's name or anything else. Is this, do you understand that, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez? Mm -hmm. 
Um, how about yeah, my account of um, my I have a bank account and there's under my name. Uh, can I use that one? Yeah, that helps. That helps, yeah. But what, what we'd like to see is your vendors uh, supply you with a letter of credit, but it does need to be in your name and not your company's name or anybody else's name. Do is, is, you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. So if you can get us those credit letters, get those back over to uh, Kimber and her staff, uh, we can take a look at it. How, how, how long would you need for that? To get those uh, letters? Uh, I think a couple of days. Okay, get those over to her as quick as you can and we'll table, the, or at least we'll make a motion to, ta to table this uh, for 60 days. Thank you for very much. Any motion, Jim? Yes, a uh, motion to table for 60 days. Second. Yeah, yeah. I, I second. Um, Ms. Rodriguez, I, I, know, uh, I know the contractor he worked for for six years, uh, and I know they're very good, so I have no doubt that he's a, he's a good painter. But could you get it done sooner? Or are, you, are you in any, are you just content to wait 60? Do you think you can do it in 30? Yes, sir. yes, sir. You can get it done in 30 or, or you want to wait? No, I can get it done in 30. I'd rather give him 60 and let him get it done in 30. Okay. okay. I second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, just, just mostly for a second. But this is a reciprocity. He's already holding a P Pinellas County license, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is Are we going to correct that in... in yeah, he's got a, he's, it, the application says test, but he's, he's already holding a Pinellas County license, so he should not have to test, just, okay. Does he need to make a correction? No? Okay. Okay, so Mr. Rodriguez, you have up to 60 days, but if you can get it done in through the month of March and get the information to staff by the very beginning of April, we'll hear rehear this at the April meeting and hopefully move you forward. Okay, thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Claudio Pascal, painting contractor, second hearing. He supplied additional information. Any comments from the board? I mean, he, he did. Uh, what has changed from the first application? He has a detailed letter about the, his painting experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's got took a seventeen month class. Yeah, in epoxy internship. Right, internship. Well, I mean, it looks like he just wants to do epoxy floor. That's right. You know. Pretty benign. Yeah. yeah. That's the only license we have that we can offer. So yeah. that's right. Motion? Make a motion to approve. I second the motion. Hey, Mosley. Back in any. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Dorman Pujols, second hearing for a building contractor. There's additional information provided regarding experience. Discussion or questions? Yeah, Mosley has some on your. Okay. Mr. Pujols, you're on the call. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, your name and address, please. Dorman, Dorman Pujols. 7521. 7521, clear. Okay. Good. 
Yeah, hey, Mr. Uh, um, or Dorman, Mr. Pujol, uh, you know, I'm, I'm again frustrated by the timing of your application. The uh, work that was uh, described by your qualifier, um, Pine River, uh, it, it seems to me that, that, that you're primarily an electrician and that, that the, uh, in the timing of the, the, the of your 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 employment here in Tampa in Hillsborough County uh, doesn't job with the fact that uh, Pine River says that you were all over the state of Florida over multiple years doing um, uh, commercial and, and single family construction and even a little bit deeper than that I don't really see where the the, the contractor really described your background doing commercial work um in in a sense that that uh, would would satisfy me um would you like to elaborate on how you could be full-time full-time employed here in tampa and then flying all over the state of florida miami coral gables pinellas county um putting the hours together that you needed to be a building contractor not a residential uh, contractor right correct i uh pretty, pretty much throughout i don't know how Ten years throughout the years, I would, I would travel, I would be, um, go on the weekends, and, and be with him, help him, help him out. And that would be in Miami. Then throughout, I would you know work with him in Pinellas, um, Tampa, Water. So all, all this accumulation, it's throughout the years, on a pretty much you know, part-time basis. Uh, had all this uh, experience with, with him. And uh, right now we're currently working uh, in his primary residence from, you know, from ground up. So all this accumulation, it's not that I only work with him, but I've worked with other separate contractors in uh, the, the Tampa and the Dallas and Pasco uh, um, uh, area. I, um, I'm one of those guys uh, that works 80 to 100 hours a week for Okay. Um, <clears throat> you've done steel erection. Steel, not much. Not much experience. Not much steel. How about how about forming and pouring of concrete tie beams and where you actually formed them and put stirrups in them and and and, 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 and pumped and poured concrete like that. I would go ahead and uh, get with the guys and you know supervise them. I you know, had some hands on as far as pouring and laying blocks. Okay. Um, most of your work been in residential or, or commercial, you'd say? Mostly, mostly residential. Mostly okay. residential. We've done uh, commercial. I mean, commercial uh, condominiums, uh, you know, stores, uh, you know, small stores, small, small. Uh, Commercial education, but not uh, make a little uh, big commercial project as far as uh, twenty-story buildings, nothing like that. Small building application. Okay, so you're th you're thinking he needs to apply for a different residential. Uh, yeah, right? I think a, at, at the very least residential, and even that, I'd like to see the his qualifier, you know, uh, get a little bit more specific about his skill sets. I, I think that uh, you know, complete interior blowouts. I mean, you know, that's to me that doesn't really say specifically what he knows and what he can do right. on either residential or commercial jobs. So I think that that that's how I'm, I guess I'll leave it. Just, I'm just not there yet as far as either one of the licenses. Well, based on what he said, though, too, you asked about steel. He said not much, and, and you asked about little and masonry. And he supervised. Yeah. He had, and he said very little hands on, yeah. but that's what the license requires. Correct. Right. So, building contract is not appropriate, in my opinion. Yeah. Much a pleasure. Um, I, I make a motion to, to give uh, Mr. Pujol uh, another 30 days to get his qualifier to drill down on some specifics that would probably give him more of a residential license. 
uh, and not a commercial license. And if he can better explain his qualifications to do that, um, then I think he'd be better suited for a, a, a residential builder's license. So a a table for 30 days. I yes, second. Me. Second the motion. The mostly McEnany table. To, to, to try to qualify as a residential. As a residential contractor, contractor correct. In lieu of a building contract. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. So you need to submit additional information clarifying your actual hands-on experience with very specific details of the work you've actually done. Um, like Mr. Rose was saying, complete interior blowout doesn't tell us anything. You laid block, you did wood studs, you did steel studs, you did masonry, you did tie beams, you installed windows. All of those different pieces of, the, of a construction project is what your qualifier needs to detail for you. And then submit it to submit it to staff by the end of the month so we could hear it at the April meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ernie Toma, test for painting contractor. Any questions or comments? Make a motion to approve. A second. Discussion. Also, in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. So moved. Uh, Arthur Wilmot. Test for paving contractor. On his uh, credit report, I see there were a couple of charge offs on here. Um, I'd like to get a little more information on why. Uh, those bills were not paid to, it looks like Purdue University. Mr. Wilmot on the call. Yes. Your name and address, please. Arthur Wilmoth, 8524 Winter Haven Drive, Hudson, Florida, 34667. Okay, could you explain about the charge offs and write offs on your credit report? Yes, the one specifically to Purdue. Uh, I was in the process of paying them when I went to the hospital a few years back. Um, during that time, they decided to charge them off. Um, I do have the option to pay them. I am just now in the position to do that. They, uh, it's just been an up road battle. Made some bad choices as a younger kid. Anybody else? Is that the only? Yeah, it looks like he cleared up everything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. And that was back to 2004, 2006, it looks like. Okay. Motion? Make a motion to approve for test. Second. Yeah, okay. Mosley will second. Alvita Mosley to approve for testing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Okay, who's presenting cases? Good morning, board members. Uh, my name is Keith Crockett. I'm the chief of code compliance contractor licensing for Hillsborough County. Uh, so, okay, I'd like to take a moment real quick and introduce uh, Matthew Kent. He's one of our uh, one of our three new code compliance inspectors. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good morning. As uh, introduced, my name is Matthew Kent. I'm a code compliance inspector with Hillsborough County Building Services Department. Uh, I was brought on last year by Mr. Minnes uh, in April as a contract inspector and uh, joined the county as an employee this December. I learned a lot in a short amount of time, still learning. I'm sure there's plenty more to learn, as there always is in this industry. Uh, looking forward to bringing, more, bringing some cases to you and uh, wish we could shake hands and, and greet one another, uh, but that's just not in the cards at the moment. So uh, with that, I'll take a seat and let uh, Mr. Crockett uh, 
present the cases. Thank Welcome you. to the club. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, the first case is 2020 0380 violators BMCI roofing contractor Jamie Boschert, license CCC 1326639. The location is the Westmont Oaks community. The dates of action are July 13th, 2020, the notice of violation was issued. On January 19th, 2021, the notice of violation was mailed certified mail. February 9th, 2021, the certified mail receipt was returned signed. The allegations are BMCI roofing contractor Jamie Bosher is believed to have improperly installed roof coverings in the Westmont Oaks community and is in violation of section 8-1 Hillsborough County Code of Ordinances, Part A, HCCCO, as follows. 113.6.2.18, allowing a violation to go uncorrected for more than 30 days. Residential building codes R904.1, roof covering materials shall be installed to manufacturer's installation instructions. Our recommendations are the citation be affirmed as written and recommended suspension and recommend suspension slash revocation of the license holders ability to have permits issued in Hillsborough County until the violations are corrected and the properties are brought into compliance. Questions for staff? CCC is state license. Pardon? Is the CCC a state license? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big boy. Okay. Yeah. Is contractor on the call? Do we have notice of the contractor be notified of the hearing? This is an affirmation of citation, correct? Yes. We don't usually notice okay. them for the hearing. Okay. And we'll entertain the uh, discuss on the allegations. Look for motions. I'll list them. Allegation one and two. Um, Sam. Yes, Sheree. Yes, Sheree. I thought Kimber said it was an affirmation. Is it an affirmation or a affidavit of violation? That's why I was trying to call you before. The paperwork says affidavit, but the the agenda said affirmation. So that's why I wasn't clear. Okay, please clarify, uh, building staff. Mr. Crockett. Yes, this is an affidavit of violation. Okay. Not, affirm not affirmation. Okay, Kimber, can you clarify the notice, please? Okay. Yes, at the end of the board packet, there is documentation that he was sent notice to appear back on February 26th and notice for today, the date and time. And we have an affidavit of posting at the courthouse of the hearing as well. And we notified the property manager as well. So, so but he, he was noticed to appear. He knows that there's a meeting today about his license. We sent proper notice to him to be here. <clears throat> we sent a certified letter, a certified? Certified regular mail, as well as posting at the courthouse. Okay, thank you. And, and he's not in attendance? Right. He's not here. So we'll go back to Jim's affirmation. Yeah. To suspend his, his license privileges. We got a motion on the allegations first. Sheree. Yes. This always yes. gets confusing every time. So this okay. is this is an affirmation or an it's, affidavit? It's an affidavit of violation. Okay, so affidavit, so we can we vote on the allegations and then vote on the recommendations. Yeah. Yes. Is the okay. is the homeowner present yeah. by chance? Is the representative of the Westmont Oaks community either in person or on the phone? Nope. 
no contractor, okay. no homeowner. All right, so just take the allegations one by one and then vote on the um, the recommendations by staff. Okay. Motion on allegations. Okay, uh, motion on allegation number one uh, uh, that the contractor is uh, guilty of um, allowing it the violation to go uncorrected for more than 30 days. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Number two. I'm sorry. Back on number one. Pelavita made the motion. I need a second. I'll second the motion. Okay, Mac in any second. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nobody. So moved. An allegation number two. I'll make a motion that the contractor is guilty of uh, violating the residential code section R 904.1, where the roof covering material has not been installed uh, to manufacturer's installation instructions. Okay. Second. The Mosley will second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Recommendation. I make a motion to uh, uphold staff recommendation that the uh, contractor's license uh, be suspended or revoked um, until these violations are uh, corrected and uh, brought into compliance. Okay, Sharif, point of order. Be state certified, we can't suspend him, correct? Right, so just permitting privileges in okay, Hillsborough County, County, City of Tampa, and City of Plant City, and Temple just Terrace. Just Right. I mean, that's how it's worded, but it's a little confusing. Suspension, revocation of license holders, ability to have permits issued. Okay. That's the same thing. I know, but it's been in the, not to be critical, but it's been written better in the past. So, okay. yeah. Okay. I have a motion. I need a second. Second, perhaps. Pat uh, or Kathy. Discussion. Under, yes. Under discussion. Can we make sure that we've got a note to, to notify the, uh, the state? Of our actions because I don't see that in here. That's normally part of that uh, state for the recommendations that the state is notified, you know, that he's been suspended in Hillsborough County. Is that redundant or does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. I guess the other question I have for staff under discussion is does he have any active permits open in Hillsborough County? I just, I'm sorry, what does was that? Does he have any active permits in Hillsborough County? Uh, I don't know offhand. No. I'm sorry. I mean, it, we, I'd hate for him to get hung up in the middle of a project, and I guess he'd be allowed to finish those anyway yeah. under the yeah. terms that we're okay. All right. Okay. And right. Also, also, just let you know that the uh, state is notified of any board decisions as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have a motion. A second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. Next case. The next case is 2020 0570. The violator, Reginald Reed Jr., license CCC 132538, Efficient Home Services of Florida LLC, 9416 International Court, North St. Petersburg, Florida 33716. The address of violation is 1414 Queensbury Avenue. The dates of action are October 1st, 2020. The notice of violation was issued and mailed with no return receipt. December 7th, 2020, the citation was issued and mailed with no return receipt. On the Fe February 2nd, 17th, sorry, February 17th, 2021, the citation was posted. The allegations are efficient home services of Florida LLC has failed to meet the requirements of the Florida building code existing section 706 and is in willful and deliberate violation of section 8-1 Hillsborough County Code of Ordinances Part A HCCO as follows. Number one, the Florida building code existing section 706 existing roof properly repair the damaged areas of the wood decking. 
the recommendations are the contractors permitting privileges be suspended in Hillsborough County until the property is brought into compliance. That was been posted at the courthouse, so we have adequate notice. Mr. Reed on the call. Uh, I am in representation of Mr. Reed. This is Joseph Dazio. I'm the CEO of Fish and Home Services. Say that again. This is Joseph Dazio with the Fish and Home Services. I'm the CEO of the company. I'm representing us today. Okay. What's your side of the, the case here? Uh, the, the the home passed final building inspection or final roof inspection last year. Uh, we were we finally received a letter from the state. I've talked to Mr. Crockett multiple times. We've been in good communication with him and Miss Lamb. Tomorrow, the roof is scheduled to be completely repaired and should be completely resolved by uh, no later than Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Is a homeowner available? Come on down. Your name and address, please. I'm sorry. Um, my name is Melanie Lamb, and I live at 1414 Queensbury Avenue. Okay. Tell us what's what happened or didn't happen. <clears throat> um, so the story with efficient home services is I hired them to put the solar panels on my home. Um, in addition to that, they had additional work they could do, and I decided to have the roof redone as well. I did pay a premium price for that, um, probably more than I should have. It was about 15000 for my roof is what it came down to. But I did it because I felt comfortable going with one company to do the solar and the roofing in case there were any issues, especially putting uh, panels on that roof. So this started in May. And they were delayed due to rain about three weeks. I let them leave the materials in the dumpster in front of my home uh, kindly. And they started. They failed the first time because the contractors that they hired did not finish the roof. It was halfway done when the inspector from the county or the city came out. So they failed the first time. The second time, and what Joe had told me on the phone was that this they prepaid them and this uh, this roofing crew had ran out on them. I was like, okay, so let's try it again. So he had another crew sent out the second time. It failed a second time due to soft spots in the roof. Um, so they sent out another crew. This is three or two months now into the process. Um, and they repaired the roof and that is when it actually passed. From that time, I emailed Joe and also Steve at EHS, and I let them know that I had a lot of issues with the home. One, just to name a few, they had stepped through my ceiling and did a very shoddy repair, um, and it took them a while to come out and actually repair that. Uh, they left my satellite hanging off the side of the roof. They left garbage on my lawn. Uh, they left a lot of nails in my grass. I had to get my own magnet and kind of pick those up around the home because my neighbor was concerned about getting nails in their in their lawnmower or riding lawnmower. Uh, nails and garbage in the gutter. And the dumpster was in the driveway for quite some time to a point where they left plywood out there. And one of the pieces of plywood completely came up, curled up. That's how long these items are out in my driveway. Um, I emailed them in June, July, August. I also mentioned the areas inside of the roof that I was concerned about. They told me that they deemed it not, that it did not need to be repaired. And I let them know that I don't understand why they would do that when I requested that. And I feel like that should have been discussed with me if I would have had to pay for extra materials or whatever the case was. Um, in September or in October, I wrote to the county because I brought my own roofer. I Someone I came out to just look at it and give me a new estimate for a roof or any repairs. And he said that he wasn't satisfied with that either. So I called the county, Mr. Oomphs came out and he agreed that the, the repairs were not good on, this, um, on the roof and put in a code violation. Um, anytime that I have emailed EHS, they have sent someone out, but they only repair one or two of the items. Um, they also, there was damage to the roof line on, on the backside where my master is, where it split apart. And I believe one of the roofing crews, well, they nailed a piece of plywood up there 
to hold it together. And that was something else that needed to be repaired as well. Um, <clears throat> so in this process, there's been no supervision. This is the first time I'm actually seeing Mr. Dazio or actually aside from speaking to him that one time on the phone uh, last year uh, and being on an email chain with Mr. Crockett, this is the first time I've actually seen him in person. I've never seen any EHS supervision at my home. Every time that someone does come out to my home, it's the first time I'm ever seeing them. I have to re-explain the process multiple times. In this process, I've paid $50, $57,000 to get solar and roofing done on my home. Um, <clears throat> they plan on coming out to my home. I allowed their two contractors to come out, representatives, and they told me that they are replacing multiple areas, including the area that I requested multiple times to be replaced. Um, and when I contacted them last week on Monday, they told me they would be repairing a couple of pieces. So I asked Joe to please provide me with a plan of what they plan on doing, especially if they're gonna use my, my facility, my, um, my electrical, they use like, obviously they use my electrical uh, to use their air, whatever the case is. I just wanna understand their plan and what they plan on doing so I don't end up in this situation. I do leave in May, I'm going on a remote tour to Qatar um, for a year, and I don't want to leave this home in this condition, especially with how much money I've put into this. So um, I'm exhausted. I'm pretty frustrated with the whole thing. So I do appreciate your time and listening to my story on what has happened. Number one, thank you for your service and your yes. <laughs> and your patience. I appreciate you it. Appreciate people in, in uniform more than you can imagine. Um, how big is your home that it was $57,000 to re-roof and solar panels? It How was, uh, it's, it was 57 to and 15 for the actual roof and 40 for the panels. It is 20, 2,400 square feet, 2380, I believe. And is this a shingle roof they put on? Yes. An asphalt shingle. It's a shingle yes, sir. Leak? Yes, there is a leak in the roof in the uh, in the front room in the dining room. And how, how old is the roof? They just put it on in June after Not the even a year. Did they ever get a final inspection? Um, what was that, sir? Did they ever get a final inspection approved? For the they did pass inspection the third time from the who from the inspector that came out for the permit. Do you owe them any money? Uh, no. So once they put the solar panels on, they can request payment. And because that was done together, they were able to request a $57,000. So they've been paid since last year. And um, I've been asking them, I let them put the solar panels on in good faith that they would take care of these issues that I had, but that has not come to light. So Did they give you any warranty? I, yes, there should be a warranty on the home. I, I believe so. I'm sure Mr. No, no, no. More to their work. Yes. Turn the mic on. Push the button on the mic. There you go. Mic, mic. What is left to be repaired? Do you have more than one or thing? Is there a big list? Um, they, the leak is the issue. And then also the areas that Mr. Ooms pointed out that needed to be repaired on the inside. He said there were a lot of dead man spots is what he called them, where they weren't braced properly. Um, even his, their representatives from EHS agreed that there were, I guess they were supposed to go across a certain amount of trusses. Uh, the one panel that I do have in questions, which I do have emails and pictures of with me, um, which is completely splitting and that area needs to be replaced as well. But did, did they give you a warranty with their work? Is it a workmanship warranty, or do you remember that being in the contract? I, yes, I believe there was there was a warranty that came with the roof. I, I can I, I mean, can go to the warranty parts if you'd like. Say that again. Uh, so she has a ten year labor warranty. She also has a thirty year uh, warranty on the roof itself, with a lifetime warranty on the shingles, 
She also has a lifetime roof penetration guarantee through her solar. So if there were any leaks for the entire lifetime of the uh, solar being installed, we would definitely uh, replace that or repair anything needed. Um, we are also actively wanting to fix the issues for Ms. Lamb. You know, we, uh, she is very correct in the fact that our first roofing team, um, I don't know, you know, if you guys, you, you all know how construction goes. They started the roof, they quit in the middle of the project, sent me uh, fake photos that the project was done. That's why we called out for the inspection. Uh, I paid them for the job to be done. It was unfortunate um, that they sent me fake photos, so we had to send a second team out there, which is correct. There was only two teams that worked on the house, not three. But we did, uh, as far as we were, you know, understood when it passed the final that everything was good. Um, to address the situation, we definitely want to repair everything, take care of any costs for Miss Lamb. This is our first complaint we've ever had on a roof, and we do want to correct everything for her. And you are the owner or you represent the owner? I represent the owner. I'm the CEO of our company. Okay, so this is not Mr. Reed. No. Okay. Uh, Where, where's the license holder? Uh, the license holder is uh, he, uh, he's supposed to be ill. I'm not sure. He said he wasn't feeling well. He's been down and out for about four days. Uh, Mr. Crockett and I have been the ones dealing with this for the last uh, couple of weeks in uh, direct communication. So I thought it would be best for me to be on this. Well, a lot of the time, well, not a lot of times, always, we want to talk to the license holder. This is the individual that's responsible for this project and all projects. So does he not feel that this is important to attend this board meeting? No, that's not it at all. This is our first complaint. This is the first time I've ever had to be on any kind of hearing like this before. Uh, I made the call to want to be on here myself to make sure our customer gets taken care of and to represent our company. Uh, well, so what, is your, what, what is your plan of attack to, to, to resolve this? Uh, I have our so our solar team is going out first thing tomorrow morning to remove some of the panels where the damaged wood is, and then we will be having our roof team uh, along with my roof manager there first thing in the morning tomorrow to get everything resolved. We're going what, to what, what, what are you going to do as far as the roof goes? Are you pulling the whole roof off and putting a new roof on to fix the We're bad spots and, and the sheathing? We're going to be replacing all sheathing that needs to get replaced, along with uh, all the shingles and um, peel and stick that's on top. Okay, so you're taking off all the peel and stick, all the existing roof shingles. Is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. We're going to replace every every single thing that needs to happen to make the roof perfect for it. And you'll have this all done by the end of the week. He, he, Jim, he's he's talking about he's talking about the areas in question. Not no, the entire roof. No, he's talking about the entire roof. Am I right? Well, the, when we're going to be repairing all of the issues on the roof. Not, not, we're not building an entire new roof. No, it's going to be anywhere there is uh, any kind of wood damage. Uh, we will be fixing all of that. Also replacing it with new shingles and new under laminate. And when, when do you feel that this work will be complete? Uh, it should be done within the next 48 hours. How about the roof, uh, the solar panels? The solar panels will be reinstalled immediately after. Those, those will be installed this week as well. And you'll have the camera yeah. come back out and verify that those panels were reinstalled properly? Uh, we can if needed, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, was uh, I sent Mr. Crockett an email this morning to make sure that there was an inspector there tomorrow to, vote, uh, to watch all work being performed. Uh, well, who's, whose inspector is going to be there? Uh, it, it's uh, whoever Mr. Crockett assigns. Who is Mr. Crockett? The chief. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, well, as far as the solar panels go, that was already inspected and, uh, and approved by the county. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So are you going to get another permit to pull those panels off and put the panels back on? Would it just be a reinspection, or would we need to have a whole new permit? Because well, if the permit has already been closed out, you're going to need another permit. Okay, I'll have my permitting director apply for that today. Okay, this is a very serious issue, you know. So, I agree. That's why we want to make sure it's done immediately. What, what has taken so long to 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 get this resolved to begin with? 
we didn't know about any of this until February as far as what the city was requiring. I talked to Mr. Crockett on that. None of the letters that were sure, first time we received the letter, I called him immediately. Or he called me asking me about the letter, which I had received the day before. And the day we received the letter, we immediately started taking action to get this resolved. I opened up an email with Mr. Crockett and uh, Ms. Newman that day. What are, where did these notices of violation go to? I am not sure. But you, you're not getting any of them, huh? The first one that we received, Mr. Crockett verified that none of them were signed for and none of them were delivered. Once we got the first one in the actual mail that we signed for, Mr. Crockett did call me the next day. Uh, him and I had a good conversation. I explained to him I want to get it resolved immediately. And I started an email chain that day with Ms. Lamb and Mr. Crockett to get everything ready as soon as possible. What's your Ms. Lamb? Who, who were you dealing with at this organization? Um, Mr. Slagle, I believe his name is how you say it. Steve is his first name. He's a project manager. And then also Joe, who was dealing with the roof. Okay. Have you heard of these gentlemen? I have. No, have, I'm talking I'm to uh, the, the contractor's representative. Have you heard of these gentlemen? Yeah, Steve Slagle, Steve Slagle is my project manager, and I'm the other person she's referring to. Okay, and, and she's been dealing with you for quite a while, and you've done nothing about it. Is that correct? As far as the wood replace, the, the roof passed the final inspection. As far as we knew, the roof was uh, approved to code. But she told you she, she had leaks, right? So we didn't know that there were any leaks until we found out in February. But the homeowner had reached out to project manager several times about issues. Every so I'm sure Ms. Lane will verify we've sent multiple people out for any anything that she's asked for. We sent multiple people out for go fix everything she's asked for. Uh, as far as I knew, we haven't heard from Ms. Lamb uh, for multiple months. And I was under the impression that everything with her home was completely okay. The first time that I had heard from Ms. Lamb from uh, October until February was um, middle of February when, I, when she called in mentioning that she was having a roof leak. They haven't heard from me since October because that's when I decided to contact the county because I was getting no resolution from EHS. I contacted them multiple times to fix a list of issues and each time they would fix one or two. And I would contact them back and say, hey, I have the emails here every month and say, hey, you, they're, they're still not resolved. And I'd like you guys to come out here and make them right. It took me calling Steve nearly every day. Well, it was every day calling his receptionist and them telling me he has 24 hours to respond and me telling him that, hey, this is how you would leave your grandmother's house. Is this what you would pay for? Would you be satisfied? It came to that point that frustrating for me it's it's very frustrating to me that i paid this amount of money and i would just all i've been asking is that they make it right and i've asked for nothing else i've asked to not be refunded a dime even though they did while well, the solar took a long time because they never submitted the paperwork or the check to tico and i physically had to go down there and ask where the check was at and to provide me proof because i was paying a 240 dollar solar payment and a 300 dollar electricity bill they did provide me $1,200 and it took me a while to actually cash that check because I just did not want to take a dime from them. I just want them to make the situation right. And right now, Mr. Daggio, this is the communication we've had where he gets very vague. He's saying he's going to replace some areas or the areas needed. What are those areas? Because when Mr. Ooms came out, he took a lot of pictures in different areas and his inspectors also came out. His representatives also came out and said that this area needed to be replaced, this area needed to be replaced, we need to look at this over here. And now I'm hearing it, and it kind of sounds like to me that they plan on doing the minimal effort and hopefully whatever the issues are with the roof that are documented and leaving instead of actually trying to ensure that it is in a good condition. So that's, that's my only problem is that I just don't get any real communication from EHS. 
on the regular. Um, they have not called me yet to tell me when they planned on coming out. So that was one thing that I was expecting. When, what time they plan on coming out? What supplies they plan on bringing? What area of space do they plan on bringing? Are they gonna take up my driveway again? Where do they plan on putting the solar panels? Are they gonna be putting it in my grass driveway? And I've asked these questions and I have not gotten a response. I did call Mr. Dazio last week and he was in a, a meeting and I never got a reply back or call back. So this is, it's extremely frustrating to me that I have to take time out of my day from work to to take care of this, but this is important to me to sure. be here, so. Yeah, you paid a lot of money. Um, I so, I mean, are we, we are her only safety net at this point. Is that what I understand? Yes. And Mr. Crockett, you, it, it would, wouldn't it be nice if we could get Mr. Crockett out there or, or one of his uh, one of his guys to meet the, you know, the roofer out there and go through every item that you have a problem with. Yeah, we we had requested uh, an email with uh, with Miss Lamb and and the Joe that we uh, be aware of the date of their repairs so we can have an inspector go by. Uh, obviously, we can't be there for eight hours, but we can be there during the uh, repairs and get a general scope of the work. Uh, so we know what will be repaired. Um, he says that he emailed me this morning. Uh, I, I didn't get anything as of about eight at eight fifteen or so, but it's very well possible. But so you can help him identify the problems, but then you would also follow back up, make sure they that they actually did them. Correct. <clears throat> Correct. And just to clarify your question earlier, the notices that didn't get returned or that we had no return receipts the all none of the addresses were different so the address we have now is the address they were all sent to that guy i tell you and, and he, he got fifty seven thousand dollars he needs to make it right he needs to make it right and we need to we need to he needs to satisfy her now look you gotta understand they have you know it sounds like the process was bad the process was really bad that's not a crime you know, that's that's not a violation. The process is the process you got. It. The dumpster sitting out there, the plywood bending up, nails in the driveway, all that. That's, that's There's nothing we can do about that. You got to forget that. At this point, you got to make sure that your roof is put down to code and will last you and your solar panels work for the time, the length of the warranty at a minimum. That's what we need to focus on now going forward. We can't fix what's in the back past. But if Mr. Crockett and the roofer could get together and identify the problems that, that we have, and it would certainly be nice if Mr. Crockett would also help in that process and find out what else he doesn't like. Because I doubt he's walked the roof or, or, or uh, this, the owner. Has the owner been on the roof? Uh, miss, I've never seen Mr. Dazio until today. And right, he has right. not came out to my house right. at all. So this guy needs to get involved. And I, we don't seem, I hope he's hearing me. But I can hear you. Okay, you you need a. This is a this is a uh, this is a military veteran. We got here. We're her last safety net. Okay, you, as as a gentleman, as a as a fellow contractor, roofing contractor, you need to get involved. Not just talking to the board, but you need to get involved with the roof and make sure we get this thing squared away and fixed. And you need to verify that get, everything that needs to be done gets done. And then when it's done, we we approve it to her to the satisfaction uh, of the uh, of the requirements. Uh, when I get a chance to check the email, I'll make sure to respond to that, and uh, we'll have we'll have I'm, myself will be out there, or uh, or another building inspector will be out there to and, meet with them. And you'll give him give the contractor a list of what needs to be repaired. So we have one firm list that so they know what we what the county expects. Correct. Okay. We, yeah, we'll go through everything. And if this if this doesn't get done satisfactorily, then you know we need to take this. We need to do everything in our power to make sure this guy doesn't roof here again. Yeah, I can yeah, I, I can I, promise I, you that efficiency. We're we're going to make sure everything is taken care of this week. Anything that needs to be replaced will be replaced. We have no budget on that. We're going to make sure everything is completely satisfied to the city and to the homeowner. Who from your company will be there tomorrow, responsible to coordinate this? 
my roofing manager, his name is Ryan McAvoy. I've listed his uh, direct cell phone number to Mr. Crockett in the email that I sent him this morning. Um, as far as I knew, and just to clarify the communication, I did receive an email from Ms. Lamb last week that said that uh, she had spoken with Ryan and he, uh, he had told her everything that we were supposed to be doing and that uh, they had set a time and everything in place for that. So uh, I, that's as far as I knew. I thought that all the communication had been laid out. So my apologies if that was not as clear as uh, she wanted. But we will be uh, definitely making sure that everything is 100% fixed this week. Okay. Before you show up in the morning, coordinate with, with Mr. Crockett and let's make sure he's out there uh, at least at the same time you are. So if he can't make it tomorrow, then don't go there tomorrow until the county inspector can be there um, at the beginning. I, I will definitely let my roofing manager know that and I will not be able to be there myself. I apologize. I'm in meetings in Manhattan right now, so I am not in the state, but I will, uh, I will definitely relay all information. I will have my roofing director out there along with my roofing manager to make sure that everything goes smoothly. I'd also like to clarify that uh, there will be someone from the county, no matter what, tomorrow. Um, hopefully myself, time permitting, um, but somebody will be there. And if I may, I'd like to be out there as well. So when that time is established, I'd like to be out there just to make sure that I'm on the same page as far as expectation um, with the roof as well. Absolutely. And uh, Ms. Lamb, you have Ryan's cell phone number, correct, in case you were to, and so you can, uh, or you can ask him any questions prior? Uh, no, I, I do not have your cell phone number. Uh, no, I, I said Ryan's. He called you on it about three times last week, I believe. Right. Yeah, I do okay. have Ryan's cell phone number. Yeah, that, I just wanted to make sure. And just so you know, I'll make sure you on the email as well, so we all have the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's a pleasure. Allegations? <coughs> yeah, Mosley will make a motion that uh, we find the contractor guilty of allegations um, uh, stated uh, FBC existing conditions, 706 existing roof was uh, improperly or proper, improperly repaired uh, and that the damaged areas of the wood decking. Is that a second? Yeah, I second. Okay, so the motion is to uphold or find the contractor guilty of allegation number one. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, five, zero. Recommendations? I make a motion to staff recommendations um, indicating that the contractor's permitting privileges shall be suspended in Hillsborough County until property is bought, brought into compliance. Yeah, Mosley will second. Okay, guys, you just, I just, uh, this is Sheree, you may want to just broaden that out. Hillsborough County, right. Temple Terrace, City of Tampa, Plant City. We'll put the language in, but it's all cities. Yes, right. Yeah. Based yeah. on the interlocal agreement, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Do I need to restate that or? No, okay. we're good. Okay. Any other discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Next case. The next case is. 2020-0676, Aqua Designs and Decor, LLC, Robert A. Mueller, 17020, Kenton Terrace, Bradenton, Florida, 34202. Address violations, 8105, Revels Road, Riverview Drive, Florida, 33569. The dates of action are December 2nd, 2020. The citation was mailed via certified mail. It was undeliverable. On January 19th, 2021, the citation was mailed via certified mail with the corrected address. On January 1st, sorry again, January 23rd, 2021, certified mail return was signed. 
The allegations are Aqua Designs and Decor LLC is in willful and deliberate violation of Section 8-1 Hillsborough County Code of Ordinances, Part A, HCCO, and the Florida Building Code R4501.17 as follows. HCCC 8-1113.6.217, failing to call for required inspections, including a final inspection at the appropriate time, the final electrical. Florida Building Code R4501.17.1, outdoor swimming pools shall be provided with a barrier complying with R4501.17.1.1 through R4501.17.1.14. Recommendations of the citation, there's going to be a clerical error here. We're going to fix that. Uh, the citation be affirmed as written. And then also that we recommend the permitting privileges be suspended in Hillsborough County, as well as uh, City of Tampa, Temple Terrace of Plant City, until the property is brought into compliance. Is he a licensed contractor? The pool contractor? The pool contractor. I don't see a license number anywhere. It's on the it's on the third or the fourth ci uh, citation here that we've got. I think it's one of the last ones. It finally shows up on the. Yes. Uh, yeah. CPC one four five eight two five six. Okay. Is Mr. Mueller here on the call? Robert A. Mueller. Okay. We have noticed the citations were posted. That the meeting was posted also. Okay. What's your pleasure? Uh, Mosley will make a motion to find the contractor guilty of allegations uh, stated HCCC 81 and FBCR uh, 450 as as uh, written. I'm sorry, we do have the um, homeowner here. Oh, different address. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I have a motion. Mosley, do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Recommendations? So Mosley will make a motion to uphold staff recommendations as stated. Do I have a second? Second. I can any second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Next case, 677. Okay, uh, next case, 2020-0677, Aqua Designs and Decor, LLC, Robert A. Mueller, 17020, Kenton Terrace, Bradenton, Florida, 34202. Address of violation is 4506 Edwards Road, Plant City, Florida, 33567. The dates of action, December 2nd, 2020, citation mailed via certified mail was undeliverable. January 19th, 2021, citation was mailed via certified mail with the corrected address. January 1st, January 23rd, 2021, the certified mail was returned signed. Allegations are Aqua Designs and Decor LLC is in willful and deliberate violation of Section 8-1 Hillsborough County Code of Ordinances, Part A, HCCO, and the Florida Building Code R4501.17 as follows. HCC 8-1-113.6.217, failing to call for required inspections, including final inspection at the appropriate time, the final electrical. Florida Building Code R4501.17.1, outdoor swimming, tool, swimming pools shall be provided with a barrier complying with R4501.17.1.1 through R4501.17.1.14. Excuse me. The recommendations of a citation be affirmed. Again, the clerical error. We're going to remove that rest of that wording for the reporting fee. Uh, and we recommend the permitting privileges be suspended in Hillsborough County until the property is brought into compliance. Yeah, this contractor here, Mr. Mueller. 
He's not homeowner. It, homeowners are here, but they don't have anything to say right now. Okay, is the one time to to say something? Okay, motion or questions? Um, I have a question. It says he didn't call for the electrical final, but is the pool up, open, and operating? Yes, it is. Okay. And how do we know that the bonding is proper and we don't have a, a Deaver's not here, but normally we worry about electrocution and pools. Was it, you know, where are we at with that? Okay, okay. Well, the, these are fiberglass pools. Um, okay. they, they still, of course, have the bonding, but uh, it's, they haven't had their inspection at all. Right. It's just a ladder is not fiberglass, that's steel. And so that has to be tied to the electrical for the ground. That's what my concern would be. And then everything tied back to the pump motor and everything, correct? correct. That's my they concern. They have not had any inspection on that. Okay. Well, the homeowners might want to take care of that just to ensure, you know, anyway, I'll get off the soapbox. Thank you. Okay. All right, and child barrier fence, I know has not been installed either. As, as well as the child safety barriers are expected. It's okay. Motion, discussion. Um, mostly we'll make a motion to uh, find the contractor uh, guilty of allegations as written, um, uh, violations uh, 8 1 and uh, Florida Building Code uh, 4501 um, 0.17 and the uh, two stated as written below. Second. Second. Jim. Okay. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. Um, recommendations. Again, Mosley will make a, a motion to uphold staff recommendations as written. Second. Second. Jim. Jim. Okay. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. Okay. Next case. Case number 2020-0678. Aqua Designs and Decor LLC. Robert A. Mueller. License CPC 1458256-17020 Kenton Terrace, Bradenton, Florida 34202. Address of violation is 535 Mans Harbor Drive, Hollow Beach, Florida 33572. Dates of action, December 2nd, 2020. The citation was mailed via certified mail. It was undeliverable. January 19th, 2021. The citation mailed via certified mail with a corrected address. January 23rd, certified mail was returned signed. Allegations are Aqua Designs and Decor LLC is in willful and deliberate violation of Section 8-1 Hillsborough County Code Ordinances Part A, HCCO, and the Florida Building Code R4501.17 as follows. HCC 8-1-113.6.217, failing to call for required inspections, including a final inspection at the appropriate time, the final electrical. FBC 4501, R4501.17.1, outdoor swimming pools shall be provided with a barrier complying with R4501.17.1.1 through R4501.17.1.14. Recommendations are the citation be affirmed and, rec and recommend the permitting privileges be suspended in Hillsborough County, as well as the city of Tampa, Temple Terrace, and Plant City until the property is brought into compliance. Mr. Mueller, is there a homeowner with this one? Yes, yes, sir, I am uh, I'm present. Your name and address, please. Michael Howitt, 535 Mans Harbor Drive, Olive Beach, Florida. Okay, have anything to add to what's been stated? I, I would. Um, and I think it's important for the, the board to understand as well that Bob Mueller, who's the owner apparently of the company, Aqua Design, I had no dealings with him for the majority of the process. I dealt with his, his brother who passed himself off as the owner of Aqua Design, and his name was Raymond Meal, M-E-H-L, who, under my understanding, was his company. I didn't know that that Bob was even the owner of the company until I had issues with getting my final inspection done. I, uh, 
contracted with them two years ago, and they started beginning work on February 28th of 2019. They finished on June 28th of 2019, and on that date, I showed Raymond Neal that the pool sun shelf, it's a fiberglass pool, so you have a shallow end that uh, has like a sun shelf that's about a third of the pool though, it's, it's, it's big. And that shallow end of the pool was, when I when he was showing, he said he had done it to get into the pool, it sagged about two inches in the center. So when you, when you step into the pool and you walk down, it would go down two inches and come back up and it got to get into the sun shelf. He told me the ground under the pool in that area must have settled, which would cause it and he would need to mud jacket or wash in sand under it to fill the void and fix the problem. He said he was working on another pool at that time, but we'll come back in October to fix it after the summer season as the pool was quote unquote usable. At the same time, I did not have my final inspection cleared yet either. Uh, and Raymond said he would take care of that when the fix the pool. He said it would be better to wait till it was actually hundred percent finished and then do it. October of 2019 came and Raymond said he was in North Georgia working on a project and he would fix it in February of 2020 after the holidays. February came and I never heard from Raymond again, despite numerous phone messages and text messages that I left him. So after a couple of months of being able to reach Raymond and calling the county, I found out that his brother Bob was actually the owner of the company. So I called him, he answered, and he said he knew what the problem was and he would take care of it and I did not need to speak to Raymond anymore, that he would fix my pool and get my final inspection completed. After a month of Bob doing nothing as well, I contacted the county again and on August 6, 2020, County Inspector uh, Tom Lachlan came to my house and met Bob Mueller there. For, as, that was the first time I've ever met Bob. He came to my house on that day. Tom told Bob everything he needed to do to fix my pool and get my final inspection done ASAP, and Bob said he would get on it and have it done. This included installing alarms on the windows and sliding glass doors, you know, the child safety alarms, properly grounding the pool with the pool cage, which apparently he didn't use a copper fill, and to bury the ground wire running to my pump deeper than just under the crushed stone on the surface, as well as to fix the sagging area in my shallow end of the pool. On November 14th, 2020, Bob texted me he was going to have his brother Raymond come to my house the next week to fix the pool. On November 17th, I texted and called Bob again because Raymond never showed up. I got a text back saying, I am on vacation. We'll be back Monday. That was the last I've ever heard from Bob Mueller. He never returned one text or call from me again since that date. On December 21st, 2020, Raymond texted that he was going to stop by and revisit the job site and wanted to give me access to my, wanted me to give him access to our gated community. Raymond never showed up. I now believe he just wanted me to give him access to the neighborhood for another prospective client because after that date, Raymond has also not returned any of my calls or texts, of which I have a record of every single text I've ever sent him. So now it's two years later. I still have a two inch sagging center of my shallow end of my pool since they installed it, I still don't have my final inspection. I am so frustrated and I do not believe Aqua Design, Robert Mueller, or Raymond Meal should be able to do any further work until they fix my pool and get the final inspection. I would not want any other homeowner to go through what I've dealt with with this company. I also contacted the Better Business Bureau to lodge a complaint last year and saw other several, other, I'm sorry, several other complaints against them as well. And the Better Business Bureau told me that Aqua Design, Aqua Design would not respond to them either. It is obvious to me that this company has no desire to do business ethically or legally, and for the good of the county, they should be banned from doing business here until they make right repair to finish the multiple projects they already have started or paid for and not complete. I've paid $79,590 for this pool, and I just want my final inspection to have it completed correctly. Thank you. Motion. Mm -hmm. Mosley will make an, uh, a motion to find the contractor guilty of allegations as stated uh, specifically HCC 8-1 and the Florida Building Code uh, 4501. Point one seven. Second. 
Alvita, second. Discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Motion on the recommendations. Mosley will make a motion to uphold uh, staff recommendations as stated. Uh, um, and uh, ag again, we want to make sure that the state has been notified of the uh, uh, the problems this gentleman's having in Hillsborough County and City of Tampa, Plant City, and Temple Terrace. Second. Second. Jim. Jim. Yeah. Okay. Discussion. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Any off agenda items? Cherie, is your protege involved with us today? Yes, I think so. Joy? Okay. Um, I see her name. Anyway, I just want to advise the board that. Um, I'm here, Cherie. Thank okay. you. Okay. Hi. That. Um, we are that you are going to have a, a new uh, board attorney. Her name is Joy McCormick. Um, she, I, I guess, about ten years ago, Joy, you were with the pub, with the uh, county attorney's office. It's worked, actually fifteen. Oh, fifteen years ago. Okay, she worked primarily with with code enforcement, but she has extensive knowledge and background in county and government law. So, Joy, if you want to. Maybe make a brief statement as to your, your background. Sure. So I am uh, a license. I've been licensed uh, here in Florida for the past almost 20 years. As Cherie stated, I did represent code enforcement um, in addition to some real estate departments uh, 15 years ago with the county attorney's office. I've since worked in private practice and most recently as general counsel uh, for a company of nonprofit charter schools and their development and expansion. Uh, so I'm just happy to be back with the county attorney's office and I look forward to working with each of you. Okay, okay. and it's been a pleasure. It's been a, let's see, a fun ride, uh, plenty of ups and downs, but a overall positive experience for me. So I still have some things that I, that I need to finish. I have uh, the interlocal agreements and some other issues that I plan to to wrap up, but I'll be in the background. Joy will be in the foreground or up front. So, um, just wanted to to introduce Joy today. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sheree. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, Sheree and Joy. Welcome to yeah. the team. Thank you. Thank you, Sheree, and in, in your work. Any off agenda items besides that? I know we're knee deep in it, learning a cella um, as it progresses. Mike's looking at me. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Your staff is learning a cella, I'm sure. Um, it, it, and I know the role has been a little bumpy, but we're getting there. Uh, and, and staff deserves kudos for being patient with the users because they've had to learn it on the fly and, and rush through it and get people registered. And once it's working, it's great. But until you get there, it's a little bit of a bunch of hiccups. The city version works really well. Um, next meeting is April 21st, 22nd? 22nd, it's confirmed. Okay, April 22nd. It's a Thursday. A Thursday. Okay, and at 0900? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'd like, to make one, I'd like to make one comment just in general. You know, it, listen to that lady speak in, in these you know, these poor pool uh, buyers, it, your, your guys' work is so valuable. And, you know, it really dawned on me that really their last defense from a bad contractor is, is, is you guys. And uh, we really appreciate you. Really appreciate you in here. If anything we can do that I can do to help, I mean, tomorrow, I, if you, and I don't know if I'm even legally allowed to, but I have people too, you know, whatever. I just want to make make things right for these people that get, I don't want to call them victim, victimized, but the pool people really look bad. Uh, maybe this guy, this roofer will fix it. I hope he does. Well, we appreciate you. Well, we work together as a team, like I've told people in the past. Um, the, the secret to getting 
this working properly is to work with the building official, his designees, you know, like I said before the meeting, I've been doing this, it's 30 years now. I got drafted by um, Judy Janes in 19, what, 91? Wow. <laughs> See, it's just passed away, but I'm still here plugging wow. away. Uh, Chuck Foster, who we all know, has been doing this for 39 years and been through a ton of building officials and inspectors and plans examiners, but we all need to work together for the greater good and we're protecting the public and under each of our specific licenses, whether it be 471, 481, 489, um, or 46, 468, and I'm sorry, I don't know the realtor section of the <laughs> statutes, but all of those, you know, number one of, of our charges protect the life safety of the public and property. And that's what we do together. And we do a pretty good job. And in fact, other counties have said, how, how do we do so such a good job? I know in the past when Wayne Francis was building official and, you know, John was in the city and they'd meet with other local, other counties, they all admired what we do. So thank you to all the current and past board members. You know, we lost Mars, but we've got a new friend with Mike. So. We're good. Okay, anybody else? As far as I know, this will be the virtual or select in-person uh, board meeting. And other than that, at 1027, we're adjourned. Thank you.